Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for coming to, uh, to my little presentation. This is at least uh, 10 more people than I was expecting, so I appreciate you all uh, coming here. My name is Sam Henderson. I have been uh, Wikipedian for uh, about 20 years. I currently reside in the great state of Illinois. I will plan to stop talking after 20 minutes uh, so we have a little time for discussion. Uh, my talk today is on challenges to policy change on Wikipedia with a particular focus on the challenges of the English Wikipedia. So here are some initial considerations for the presentation today. Although the topics I'm discussing are shared by many open wikis, the particular example I'm considering today is the English Wikipedia. So when I say Wikipedia, I mean en.wikipedia.org. When I say policy, I mean policies and guidelines and sometimes essays uh, and interpretations. Um, so uh, I want to begin with a basic truth that I think uh, anyone who has visited Wikipedia in at least the past decade is familiar with, um, which is that uh, the state of the wiki is not great. Um, I think uh, we've all seen this probably on a personal level with articles that are covered in dust and mildew and haven't been touched in a decade or more. But I want to take uh, a slightly higher level look at what that means. Uh, at least I think I do. Let me see what happens here. Okay, that's how you do it. Um, all right, so uh, as this chart shows, um, this is the number of articles in each year that went with no human edits in that entire year. That's been on a steady upward trend. We got a little reprieve in 2020 with the pandemic, uh, but for the past two years and going into this year, it looks like we will soon have three years in a row where more than 2 million articles went uh, with no attention whatsoever. Um, uh, there's uh, more than 6 million. This is, this is roughly a third. I can't, can't think of the exact number. I think it's something like 6.6 .6 million right now. Um, so uh, this graph um, both illustrates and uh, understates the problem. The median amount of time that uh, an article as of September 1st of this year has gone with no edits at all is six months. Um, but as we probably all know, most of those human edits are very small. Somebody's fixing a typo, uh, somebody's updating a reference, but uh, often substantive edits can be five, 10, 15 years in the past. And here's a, here's a view of the word count statistics, which is maybe not terribly helpful because of that giant gap in the 2010s. Um, but as this shows, the growth in word count um, has been basically flat at around 3% um, since, uh, since the 2010s. So there's a story we often like to tell ourselves that the wiki isn't growing a number of articles as much because everybody's working on expanding and maintaining articles, but this also shows that that isn't happening to the degree that we would like. Um, and likewise, you see pretty much the same trend here probably a pretty familiar trend of the reducing rate of growth in number of articles. I think we're down to about uh, 14,000 articles a month right now. And all of this is happening while human knowledge is continuing to grow at, in many cases, accelerating rates. This is probably the most, <clears throat> excuse me, the most, um, conservative estimate of the rate of growth in human knowledge because this is just peer-reviewed uh, journal articles, um, which is certainly not the full set of reliable sources. And um, one optimistic 
perspective on this is given by uh, Mr. Zhang here, uh, that basically the early growth in Wikipedia was due to uh, jump starting from other extant data sources. And um, as we get into the policy side of this, I would point out that it's not so much that we have exhausted the potential of existing data sources, but that choices have been made to change Wikipedia's policies and practices so that we aren't able to build on those sources in the same way that the wiki once did. Uh, so at the end of the day, we get content by having people to work on it. We maintain articles by having people to maintain them. Um, and the, uh, the rates of editor retention, I joined the Wikipedia in 2004. Uh, and astonishingly, in 2006, almost 40% of the people who had made an edit, made their first edit in 2004, were still active on the wiki. Uh, but that rate fell off very quickly, uh, has been in the single digits uh, since the class of 2007. And um, in general, we're at somewhere between 1 in 20 and 1 in 15 Wikipedians um, who made their edit in a calendar year will still be around two calendar years later. And that's important because those initial two years shape how long, how many people are going to be around further out. It may be a, a little hard to read here, but uh, basically at whatever the editor retention rate is at two years, about half of those people are around in five years, about half of those people are around in 10 years, and about half of those people are around in 20 years, which has the remarkable result that there's a larger proportion of people who joined in the year I did, 2004, and earlier, who are still around than there are people who joined in 2019 who are still around. So that is a concerning set of circumstances. Um, and one story that we might like to tell ourselves about that is People are doing other stuff. Everybody's on TikTok. Nobody cares about text anymore. Nobody really wants to work on Wikipedia. And numbers have gone down, but we are still getting hundreds of thousands of people trying to get involved on Wikipedia every year. And certainly many of those people were never going to stick around. Many of them maybe aren't even participating in good faith, but certainly uh, we could hold on to more of them than we do. I don't think anybody would say it's only one Wikipedian in 20 who's joining the project now, who's legitimately trying to make Wikipedia a better place. Um, and I think as we turn to policy here, um, a significant issue is the opaque way that policy, by which I mean policies and guidelines, are interpreted and applied. Um, I pulled a couple of excerpts from the notability page here that I think are illustrative of that. Uh, the GNG itself, um, probably the most wordsmithed and negotiated sentence on all of Wikipedia, um, is often read in ways that are unrecognizable uh, from the text. Uh, yeah, it, it, the simplest thing that bothers me is that it is written as a conditional, but routinely applied as a biconditional. You only get a presumption of notability if these things are true. Um, and for that matter, presumption is also often interpreted in very surprising ways. And that is significant because for many Wikipedians, especially those who start out by creating an article, one of their first interactions with the community is going to be with articles for creation or the new pages patrol, um, where a lot of emphasis is put on enforcing these words. Uh, similarly, with significant coverage, the guideline is written, just says there needs to be enough information that you don't need original research, but often that's interpreted to mean basically you need a, a whole article or a whole book about the topic. 
a uh, similar case where uh, Wikipedia practice uh, diverges from uh, recognizable English is uh, the determination of consensus. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later, uh, but certainly when I began on the wiki, uh, consensus largely meant rough consensus. It was something, if you said we have a consensus, it would be something that an objective observer would say, yes, there's a consensus here or something like it. Uh, whereas uh, it's become a way of weighting participation in such a way that power is not in the participants, but in the people evaluating what they have to say. Um, one book that I found very useful in understanding how that process works is Veto Players. And uh, one particular finding in there is that um, as policy becomes static, uh, more and more power, uh, more and more discretion ends up in the hands of the people who are applying the policy. Um, in, in the kinds of countries and governments that uh, Dr. Cephalus was studying, those would be judges and bureaucrats uh, on Wikipedia. It's a somewhat more nebulous group, um, but it creates a very confusing environment uh, for newcomers, and it creates a problem that problems that affect newcomers can't be rectified uh, because the voices are excluded from the outset, as, uh, as Lisa Simpson has to say here. Um, and so I'd like to propose understanding that uh, through a voice exit and loyalty framework. Um, here's one quote. This is from, uh, uh, I'm going to get his name wrong, uh, Alfred Hirschman, uh, Alfred Hirschman's book of uh, 1970, but which has been uh, very influential in the understanding of online communities as well. Um, and this particular quote shows the connections between these three concepts that essentially loyalty is the likelihood of people sticking around even when the going is bad, voice is the ability of people to make themselves heard about problems they're having, and uh, exit is exit, the power to leave. Um, and as he points out in this quote, the, chan the chances for voice to function effectively as a recuperation mechanism to get your organization back on track are appreciably strengthened if voice is backed up by the threat of exit. And uh, a problem we have on Wikipedia is that we don't care if people leave. Uh, you know, the door's right there. Bye. Have a nice day. You don't need to be here. Uh, there are certainly many other uh, essays and policies that go to this point, uh, but I did pull... Uh, not compulsory is kind of probably the most uh, most frequently uh, cited version of that. Uh, on the flip side, participation as a new editor is very difficult pretty much throughout the time period of single digit editor retention. Um, as this, uh, this article says, uh, the community has shifted away from growth to quality assurance and reinforcing norms. And the problem we have is that uh, that focus on quality has actually led to less maintenance because we have fewer people doing the maintenance and fewer people who want to deal with all of the difficulties of being a Wikipedian. Uh, there are a lot of strategies that people use to shut down uh, the voices of, uh, of new contributors and old contributors who, who aren't... Uh, comfortable with the current state of the wiki. Uh, this is uh, just a clip from the table of contents for arguments to avoid and deletion discussions. Um, although in, in favor of that page, it does contain a section about how you should not cite this page indiscriminately. Uh, it is, in fact, widely cited indiscriminately. Um, so just to uh, kind of summarize my points here, uh, you know, when the initial conditions you have as an editor are good. You're likely to stick around when people are making your life difficult when you first start out. People are not likely to stick around, and the consequences of that is felt in the composition of the editor community even 20 years later. Uh, there's a particular problem here 
that when we say, you know, people should speak up and change what's happening on the wiki, the problem is most people who disagree with how things are will have already left. So you get a, a self-selected group where, of course, under the determining consensus policy, even the voices of those who are still around in dissent are often disregarded. Um, I'm down to five minutes here. This is just a quick uh, comparison of the state of the general notability guideline in 2006 to 2024. I would just point out that it has not changed very much, but the application of it has changed a great deal in those 18 years since it was first articulated. Um, and uh, an issue that has come up in scholarship, uh, numerous articles uh, have found that uh, inconsistent application of notability criteria creates a lot of problems for new users and perpetuates systemic bias. So you have, in this case, uh, an edit-a-thon specifically organized to help to address systemic bias and articles are being uh, nominated as non-notable despite cited sources while the edit-a-thon is still going on, uh, which may be a, an extreme example, but I think it probably speaks to many new users' experience. Uh, here is another article that uh, looks at the inconsistent application of the Too Soon guideline. I think it's a guideline, maybe it's an essay, I don't remember. Um, which is often cited uh, to shut down uh, uh, the creation of articles that are about people who maybe are not at a finished career stage, but may still have the coverage that you need to actually meet the GNG. Uh, I'll just skip that. I didn't get enough material in here. Um, and there has been some research specifically looking at how toxic interactions and negative interactions affect editor retention. Uh, in this case, uh, the authors found that uh, a toxic comment after the first or second contributions uh, would reduce by a factor of 1.8 uh, the likelihood of that user continuing to contribute. And uh, if you hang out on articles for deletion, you will not have to wait very long to see some toxic comments. Um, and in general, deletion, in particular, deletion already is not exactly a civil experience. It says, your contributions are so bad, we can't improve on them, get out of here, leave us alone. Um, and sentiment in Wikipedia article, deletion discussions, uh, tracks with that and is generally not especially conducive to editor retention. Um, so the point, as, uh, as I would say, is that the growth of Wikipedia was made possible by a set of policies that no longer exist, and the set of policies that now exist would make it impossible. Uh, so if we look at the voice edit, and, uh, excuse me, voice exit and loyalty framework, um, oh, I'm sorry, what happened? Okay, uh, you know, you can grow group the strategies that uh, could be used here under those same three components. So a voice strategy is, you know, you speak out, you say, this isn't working for people. Um, the problem with that is that generally those discussions go nowhere and there isn't really an effective way to organize on the wiki or in many cases off the wiki. Uh, and, of course, the consensus evaluation process makes the system further insensitive to user voice. Uh, loyalty is uh, a good strategy for sticking around, but not a good strategy for changing anything. And looked at from the point of view of the wiki, what we do to encourage loyalty is to have a good initial editor experience. Um, so it's a bit of a catch-22. Um, an exit strategy will still not be effective in changing the state of affairs on the wiki, but it does create the possibility 
of creating something different. And um, one possibility that I think various people have floated, but I don't think anyone has executed successfully at this point is a, a federated model of wikis um, using you know, ActivityPub or some related protocol. And in theory, that should be very simple. In practice, if you tried to mirror Wikipedia, uh, you will find it is not very simple. And that is uh, all I have to say. So uh, any questions or comments? I guess we don't. Do we need a microphone? Do I need to hand somebody the microphone? Do I actually have or? Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks for that talk. Um, I think I agree with you on a lot of things in terms of the policies making it difficult for newcomers. Um, I think there's also a certain amount of base reality of um, just having a lot of content that's already been written, meaning that when someone thinks they identify something that needs to change, there's a chance it's already been uh, worked on and is the way it is for a reason. Um, and also, like you mentioned the focus on quality. Uh, there are very good reasons for that and benefits from that. Um, and so I'm wondering in terms of the possible remedies here, um, if we take sort of the fact that Wikipedia is much more mature, meaning much more has been, been written, and the fact that the focus on quality, I think many of us would argue is necessary, um, to what extent are those sort of baked in things inevitably going to lead to the hostility to newcomers that you're identifying uh, versus like things that we could control? in terms of clarity of policies or things like that. Thank you. Um, thank you, That's, those are uh, really good points. I think uh, what, I, what I would say in response uh, without having gathered my thoughts completely is uh, that the strategies we have now are not actually effective in, the structures we have now are not actually effective in maintaining article quality. And I, I would struggle to find an article of any length on Wikipedia that doesn't have at least a section that has not been updated in many years or does not have very obvious errors that have gone unfixed for many years. And we won't be able to get the quality we want if we are using a requirement of quality up front, the wiki process works from building from imperfect stuff gradually into better stuff. Um, so that's, uh, I, I guess, I, I agree. Those are those are very important points, and uh, and thank you. Uh, anybody else? Get away with not using that I will because of my hearing disability. But can't hear me, let me know. Um, thank you for this talk. I really appreciate it. As a relatively new user, I found several reasons not to contribute. And I also run Editathon, just so that we can my little piece of paper for electronic literature. 90% of us are new users. And we've gotten chased out. The only reason why. I don't have a troll on my back who required me to have conflict of interest because I know people in the field because I'm a subject matter expert. I have two trolls on my back. I came last year and that got taken care of, but it was only because I traveled. I can't imagine all the other groups of interest, minority groups of interest who have trolls or who have bad actors who can't travel here. Andy has given out many pieces of paper about her issues with the Indian tribes, and there's like five or six people on there that she has identified that say, oh, only federally recognized tribes are okay, and only Wikipedia can decide what's an Indian tribe. And this is egregious. 
a lot of these issues are racial, they are discriminatory, and there are only a few bad actors. I mean, somebody was saying last night, well, 1% of the Wikipedia editors are bad actors. Great, fine. Give us a way to talk to somebody, explain the myriad of Wikipedia bureaucracy, which we don't understand as new editors, and let us report the problems to somebody who can say with a consensus, here's what's going on. We've got problems in three ways for new editors from my perspective. One is this bad actor chasing us away, and it's happened, as you know, in many other places. The other is, as a new reader, the tea room's great, but it doesn't tell me what to do. It doesn't say, here's who to talk to. And so, and the third problem, I can say, is when you're a new reader, when you're a new user, you get, you get confronted with, here's the easy edits. Those are anything but easy, let me tell you. And that's what I did. I, I did my very first edit. No, oh, an easy article, I can edit this. I did, and the very first thing I got was a disparaging comment. How dare you do that? So I would suggest as a policy, two things. One is, for the easy edits, have those human curate. So that if somebody has an article that has typos, a human being says, yes, a, a new editor should do this one. You know, baby edits, call it something like that, but make it human character, not God. The second is to have a diplomatic channel for newbies. More than just the tea house, say, if you've got a problem, like a police station, I've got a troll, can I go to the police, please? There is no place that I could find as a new reader, as a new user, that would help me with my specific people problem. Thank you. Thank you. Don't, that, that was very well said. Uh, I don't think I have anything to say in response, but thank you very much.